What? So the town remains. Let us see if what I seek is here as well. We have arrived. I can still feel the touch of Ilfarn around us and beneath us. Know that we must find the five statues of Angarad if we are to complete the ritual of purification. These statues are within these ruins, if our sources are true. Without undergoing the ritual, we cannot defeat the King of Shadows. We must make haste. The sooner we complete the ritual, the sooner we can take the battle to our enemy. Let us attack! My spells have failed me. Come on, a 
In ancient times, Guardian was created to protect Ilfarn. If the time has come to dismantle our great instrument, you will be an agent of its destruction. Take this blessing of camaraderie. May its power strike down all who oppose you and your allies. The first part of the ritual is complete. Our enemy's home is everywhere darkness lies. You need station. Know that though the King of Shadows may become legions, this ritual may still be used to drive him back. Yes.
Dust upon the floor stirs beneath your feet. What brings one of flesh and blood to this empire of spirits? Has the Guardian returned then? I heard the whispers, but I did not believe. His echoes are strong in this place, and the tides of spirits ebb and flow, signifying little. Perhaps I do. Ages pass and names change. I have existed longer as a spirit than as a breathing blooded elf, and I know little of the world beyond my books. The Guardian was once a man, a hero of Ilfard in days long gone. He saw more clearly than most. He saw the threats that might destroy all we had built, and he sacrificed everything that our empire might live. A creature of magic he became, and an extension of the very weave. Our enemies, the men of Netheril, feared to face him, so they turned their eyes to weaker prey. By the Guardian's sacrifice, Ilvan was saved. We thought the Weave eternal, an endless font of life from which the Guardian might draw. In this, we were wrong. The Weave failed, and the Guardian faced a choice. Allow himself to die and leave Ilfarn undefended, or draw his life from another source. For the sake of his people, the Guardian turned to the Weave's dark twin, and thus, he became a creature of shadow. Yes, though I prefer to remember him as the man he once was. I... 
a merely a historian, and my judgments are of little consequence. Speak to others who knew him, if you wish to answer that question for yourself. Their spirits linger here still. So our leaders also believed. They devised the ritual of purification that we might weaken the Guardian. The words are recorded upon five statues. One such statue is here. And the statue lies within the stone communion tree, a blending of arboreal and terrestrial. It symbolized the union of Ilfan's dwarven and elven peoples. Opening the tree requires similar unity. Three elves and three dwarves of Ilfan spaced equally around its trunk. Without these six, the tree will remain close to you. Spirits of Ilfan dwell here. Elves and dwarves were bound closely to the Guardian and the man he was in life. His memory hangs heavy on their souls. If you gather these spirits to you, then the tree shall open to reveal what it cradles within. No, I am not like them. They are bound here against their wills, but I have chosen to guard these scrolls. It is not so simple. Just as the Guardian has fallen into shadow, so have those who were tied to him. Their torment has spawned a legion of foul undead, manifestations of their pain and sorrow. Destroy these undead, and I believe their spirits would reappear, for a time at least. Yes, but there is more. More that is my doing, I'm afraid. If you intend to bring spirits to the communion tree, you must undo the wards on the walls of these ruins. The ghost lights, which keep the spirits at bay. They are the wards designed to shelter and trap the spirits within these ruins so they cannot spread their taint beyond this place. To your eyes, the ghost lights glow with a blue light, but to the spirits of my people, the glow is like that of the sun, a searing light that they cannot approach. As long as the ghost lights burn, the spirits cannot reach the tree. The touch of the living is enough. When they are touched by one that lives, they will go out. And once they are extinguished, the spirits may pass. Is it done then? Has the fool ended himself? Or did the ritual fail entirely? This shade is cycling through events of the past, and perhaps has been ever since its death. I cannot say this for certain, but it is likely the one he is speaking of is the one who became the Guardian. Him? You mean... You mean... He who became the Guardian? We aren't even allowed to use his name, you know that. 
Yes, I knew him. Knew him, taught him, and watched him toss it all away. I did not tutor that boy for twenty years, only to have him turned into some mindless monstrosity. A waste, I say. Oh yes, shows it himself, ever the patriot he was. Sacrifices must be made for the good of all. Ilfarn is a great nation, and preserving it is our responsibility. Well, I say this. Let the weak and the worthless make the sacrifices. That boy had a mind in his bone cage. He might have advanced the study of magic, but instead he threw it all away for love of country. Gifted? I suppose, for a human. Ah, yes, he was gifted by the hells. A quick mind, a sharp wit, a noble spirit. Have you ever noticed, I wonder, how those who have everything are always the quickest to throw it all away? I heard how it ended for him, lying there screaming for near a hundred days with that fool girl at his bedside, as the weave slowly burned away what was left of him, bit by bit. But he got his wish, didn't he? Lost himself and became the guardian. All that he was, all gone. Yes, I suppose I will follow.
You must pardon me, friend. It was not my custom in life to greet visitors with swarms of undead. I am called Anias. Oh yes, such is my punishment, to languish here until the gods see fit to set me free. But I suffer it gladly. My crimes saved a nation. I created the Guardian, you see. Yes, me, a silly fat dwarf. I created him, later tried to destroy him, and I would do it all again. I make no apologies. Indeed, the fault is mine. If it makes you feel any better, I have been trapped in this foul undeath for more centuries than I dare to count. And I will likely remain here for many more. It's not a pleasant fate, but I would gladly endure my torments a hundredfold before I took back the decisions I made. A great man, a patriot. Can you imagine such a sacrifice? He didn't simply give up his life. He offered up his very self for his people. Indeed, the fault is mine. If it makes you feel any better. It's not a pleasant fate, but I would gladly endure my torments a hundredfold. I understand your anger, and I am sorry for your loss. But I do not regret what I did. Nor would I, ever. After his corruption, yes, we tried twice to destroy him. Well, I'm told they tried again afterward, but by then, I was dead. First, we sent the Silken Sisters against him. Silly and foolish, those elf girls, but brave too. I warned them not to strike the Guardian. I counseled our leaders to withdraw, to pull all our folk from the heartland, and to regroup, to make a plan. The sisters were destroyed. Then our leaders turned to me, and I devised the ritual, the very ritual of purification which you seek to complete. We failed. The ritual functioned as expected, but there was dissent amongst us. Some of the wizards, old friends of his, refused to strike. They tried to reason with the Guardian instead. As friends, and arrogant ones at that, they believed that their counsel could change him where the power of Ilfarn could not. How could they expect not to? He had been their friend. Surely he would remember them, listen to them. Their minds understood the power of the ritual, but their hearts did not. Nothing more than could be expected. The Guardian was no longer a man, no matter what his friends believed. We were divided, and the Guardian slew us, drained our lives, everyone. And with us perished the might of Ilfarn. The consequences? Thousands of innocent people protected from the wrath of Netheril, an enclave of culture and tolerance preserved against a canvas of hate and war. No, I do not regret the consequences. The Guardian saved my people. A man can act for good purpose or for ill, but he cannot predict every consequence. Walk down one street instead of another, and you might doom someone to die. But you are a fool if you blame yourself for this. The Guardian was conceived with noble purpose. I foresaw no evil in his birth. My conscience is clear. Aha, then you seek to combat the Guardian. Of course I will help you. Lead on, and I will follow.
Enough of this one. Glory, come <laughs> Mind Flayer Slave. I can smell you, plunderer. I can taste your steel and hear the rustle of the hundreds you've slain, swirling and fading in your wake. That I can't. My eyes he took. My eyes and my name, my future and my past. Names? You won't find names in this place, plunderer. Only questions. He's drained us all of names just like we took his. Yes, our guardian. I wonder, have you asked yourself the question yet? Have you seen past the ramblings of priests, past the sobs and sighs of broken minds, and spied the real conundrum? Ilfarn was destroyed by the very Guardian whose sole purpose was to protect our nation. He was the perfect protector, and yet he turned against us. But why? We stripped him of his name so he had no pride. We stripped him of his self so he had no ambition. His purpose was as pure as it was simple. To protect his nation and destroy its enemies. He wasn't flawed, he was perfect. Yet still, he was our doom. No, that isn't the reason at all. The Guardian turned to the Shadow Weave to further his purpose. 
only to keep himself alive that he might protect his nation. There's a dirty little secret, one the others won't tell you. We struck first. We never bothered to learn the Guardian's intentions. Think of it from his perspective. He is the Guardian, the prime defender of his nation. Then he is attacked by Ilfarn's soldiers and wizards. No one is more devoted to Ilfarn than he. Therefore, his attackers must be enemies, even if they do wear Ilfarn's colors. Who can say? The blood-drunk elf girl swooped in before we could ask, before we could think. Yes, the Guardian's nature had changed, but what did that mean? What did he want? Revenge? Did he want his life back? Did he simply want to feed? We didn't even try to find out. As for me, I don't think his motives had changed at all, nor have they ever. Perhaps, or lacking an Ilfarn to defend, he is simply trying to destroy her enemies, wherever he perceives them to be. Or perhaps it is merely the ramblings of a shattered and nameless mind. Make of it what you will. For my part, I will follow you and say no more. He screams! Someone must stop this! Why will no one listen? Spirit? Is this another of the dwarf's ploys? I warn you, he won't be rid of me this time. For ten days have I sat vigil with the... the Guardian, as they call him now. His pain has only worsened... worsened when Anias promised it would ease. Who is... Do you mock me? Or is the Dwarf afraid to face me? He knows he has done an evil thing. He may talk all he likes of patriotism, of sacrifices for our nation. A century of peace is not worth such suffering. How can we call ourselves civilized when we ask a good man to endure such pain? To become some unfeeling thing? The weave fills him. It boils in his every vein, day and night, ten day after ten day. Is it not enough that he must sacrifice his very self? End this, now! If enough of us come together, demand that Aeneas release him from the ritual, end his pain. It isn't too late. It can't be! No one warned him of the pain. Anias speaks of patriotism. He didn't even know this would happen, and he doesn't care. I hate Anias. You've seen him speak of the ritual, of the pain. It gives him pleasure. The dwarf tries to hide it, but watch his eyes, and you'll see. I don't understand. I've just come from the temple. I can hear his screams, feel the warmth of his hands. We can still save him, I I'm certain. Such reminders will be forgotten. There is nothing that can be done. The past surrounds them like a cage, and there is no key that will free them. Come, let us take this shade to the communion tree. There, perhaps, she will do more to help the one she loved than she does here. Come with you? Very well, I will. I will follow.
Yes. Stay close and step where I step.
what? I live? I thought not. You know why? No pain. Never fought a battle and came out feeling, well, feeling like this. Like nothing. Thunderbelly they call me, the Iron Arm of Dardath. First dwarf over the walls at Sunstone. The name's on account of my appetite, see? Got it from the boys on the field of Delambir. Here I was, smiting trolls left and right, and my belly's growling louder than me, on account of no breakfast. Good days those were. Oh, I'm all right. Always half expected I'd end like this. I like this world too much to leave. I like to eat and wench and belch and fight. Now here's a spirit with some virtues I can respect. I died in the battle, no doubt. The last battle. When all that remained of Ilfarn went out to meet the Guardian. They say we won, walled him up in some plane of shadow. But I don't call that a victory. Victory's when I swing my axe and split my foreman's skull. That was no victory, even for the worm. I sure is steel, all the host of Dardath, a thousand banners, and iron, iron everywhere, shining as far as I could see. And me, at the head of it all, beside old Grizzlebeard and Lady Crowspite, above it all that crystal worm. Gods, but he was big. Where he came from, who can tell? But he'd come to put an end to the Guardian. And that was enough for the likes of us. Good thing we had him, too. He fought even tougher than he looked. Managed to distract the Guardian while the wizards did their work. Ended bad for him, though. The Guardian did for him, like he did for all of us. We saw him fall, just dropped out of the sky, all shining, like he was carved from diamond. The wizards weren't ready yet, so they sent us in next. Last I remember, the whole host of Dardath was marching forward, me and a few others at their head. Then, all around us, these little shadows. They were everywhere, hundreds of them. And one of them, he, he was just there, in front of me, all of a sudden, so close, so close, and he reaches for me, and... Not at first. I think I would have gone with the others. I could feel them, you know. Feel them drifting off, going somewhere. But not me. I made an oath. 
It was before the battle. Swore I wouldn't come home till the Guardian was slain. We all said the words, but I meant them. They beat him, those wizards did. They trapped the Guardian. I don't know how I know that, but I know. Whatever you need, Thunderbelly's your dwarf. <laughs>